quick. We're gonna need some time to fire up the engines. Let's give the laser turret a workout. Company. Alright, let's get out of here. I have no intention of being left behind. Now, let us leave. they hit us, we're dead. But if they keep missing us, we're dead. It's great odds. Somebody shut that trash compactor up! That'll take out the whole field, the colony, and maybe us. We might not even be able to jump to hyperspace in time. Then we die here. Choose now. Hold on, this is gonna get a little rocky. Well, now that we just killed a planet, maybe one of you can tell me what's going on. Because between assassin droids, a Sith Lord that looks like he sleeps with vibroblades, and being target practice for a Republic warship, I was better off in my cell. The Republic warship was the Harbinger. It was seized on its way to Telos by the Sith. They sought you, Jedi.
Because you are the last of the Jedi. Once you are dead, then they have won. The Sith will dare to accuse you of such. They believe you to be a Jedi Knight, and that is all that matters. The Jedi's civil war destroyed the Jedi. By the war's end, barely a hundred Jedi remained. Many fell in battle, and many more were seduced by Revan's teachings. Many Jedi blamed the teachings of the Jedi Masters for Revan's fall, and the civil war that followed. The Jedi Academy on Dantooine is nothing more than a crater that echoes with the ghosts of dead Jedi. And the Jedi Temple on Coruscant lies empty. The waters in the Room of a Thousand Fountains have fallen still in reverence to the fallen Jedi and those now lost. Perhaps, but they are Jedi no longer. If the Sith have not already slain them, then they will not help you, nor can you help them. Yes, to aid in the recovery effort there. Many roads lead to Telos, including ours. Not like we have much of a choice, the Paragus astrogation charts being what they are. It is where we must go, and where the Harbinger was bound before our unfortunate encounter on Paragus. You were difficult to find, but coincidence was on our side. When I learned that you were on the vessel, I knew the Sith would not be far behind. When we intercepted the Harbinger, it was crippled, drifting in space. It was a simple matter to board the vessel and rescue you. Unknown to me, however, the Sith were already on board. Just as we made the jump to hyperspace, they fired upon us, nearly destroying the Ebon Hawk. Whatever occurred on board the Harbinger had rendered you unconscious. Though your thoughts were faint, I was still able to find you sealed in one of the cargo holds. True. But as one trained in the Force, you know that true coincidences are rare. I do not know how the Ebon Hawk was able to make it to per Be silent. We're having a conversation here. Repaired this ship, my eye. Next thing you know, it's gonna claim credit for saving our skins. If that little noisemaker says it repaired the ship once, then it can prove it by doing it again. Go on, get! That is not an easy question to answer. This threat is greater than you know, and I do not believe it is a battle that can be fought. Look, enough with the Wii already. We cannot hope to triumph against them alone. To stop them, you will need weapons, allies, and a teacher. In the end, I fear it may not be enough. You fought in the Mandalorian Wars, and it cost you everything. Are you willing to sacrifice as much again? You are not listening to me. This is not like any field of battle you have ever fought in. Think carefully on your choice. If you choose to fight, if you choose war, it is a path few turn from once the first steps are taken. It carries with it a terrible price. And in the end, you may find you have nothing left to sacrifice. Like so many Jedi, you hear, but you do not listen. You have much to learn. But we have spoken long enough, and my wound pains me. If you have other questions, find me in the crew quarters. There we will speak more. Hey, don't stop your long, boring rants on my account. I was just getting sleepy-eyed. Also in private, we will be mercifully free from the opinions of imbeciles and fools. Look, uh, not like I care or anything, but you might want to go check on our passenger. Especially with that hand of hers. I think she was barely keeping it together. I'm surprised she's able to stand with all that pain rolling off of her. Are you blind? 
If I were her, I'd be screaming like a stuck Minoc. Well, I mean, a very strong, manly Minoc. I think she's just too proud to show any weakness. Especially in front of you. In case you hadn't noticed, she won't say two words to me, but she'll talk your ear off any chance she gets. What you think matters to her. A lot. She wants you to respect her. Besides, we haven't got much else to do until Telos. Come for more answers. There is little more left to give. That does not surprise me any more than you hearing my thoughts when we were apart. The pain, however, was unexpected. If I could, I would have shielded you from it. I do not know. I fear that the consequences would have been more extreme. Then the sensation you would feel upon my death might be less than that, though much quicker. Possibly, yes, and I fear it works both ways. I would not wish to test it, nor should you.
When battle is upon us, I suspect our minds are prepared enough to shield each other from the pain. I think we shall not have a repeat incident of what happened at Paragus. It seems the force flows easily between us. When one of us manipulates the force to heal or strengthen ourselves, the other is aided as well. A powerful technique indeed, though, as we have noticed, it has its drawbacks. I do not know. The Sith struck more swiftly than I thought, and they will not stop until they have you in their grasp. If you fall, all the galaxy will echo it. It does not matter where we go. It is not the destination that matters. It is the journey. All paths will take us to the end, whatever it may be, and no matter how strongly we fight against it. For now, we are bound for Telos, and that is enough. Before the war, Jedi who failed their training were sent to the fields of Telos to serve the galaxy, not as Jedi Knights, but as farmers and laborers. The destruction of Telos was complete. I doubt any Jedi remain. Yet there may be echoes of their passing. We shall see. Then I am left with nothing more than we had already. My faith in you and your ability to meet what comes. Ask, and I will answer. These Sith, they seek the death of all Jedi, as have all the Sith since the Jedi Order was first split. Yes, the Jedi Civil War is not the first one of its kind. Thousands of years ago, the Jedi had another civil war that split the Order. It was a terrible thing. A faction among the Jedi abandoned the teachings of the Order, following their own path. They waged war on their fellow Jedi, a war that raged across the galaxy. But these fallen Jedi were cast out, defeated, and they retreated to worlds in the Outer Rim. Over time, they took on the mantle of the Lords of the Sith. But in their hearts, they never forgot the Jedi. The hatred for the Jedi Order burns in their veins like fire and echoes in their teachings. Revan tasted it as Malak did. In a manner of speaking, they are different from Malak in that they are concerned only with the destruction of the Jedi. For them, it is all that matters, all that ever mattered. It is a different war these Sith wage, a thing of silence and shadow. They strike from the darkness, hiding from the face of the galaxy until all Jedi are exterminated. After all the Jedi are gone, then the galaxy is theirs, no matter whether the Sith or the Republic rules. It is the dark side that shall reign, unchecked. I believe them to be the result of special teachings. Their apparent weakness against you is evidence of this. Those Sith assassins can sense their prey through the Force. It is like a hunger. They feed and grow stronger when they are near Force sensitives. The stronger their prey is in the Force, the deadlier they become. As long as you were cut off from it, you were able to evade their sight. But after Paragus, I fear that you will be no longer shielded from their eyes or the eyes of their masters. The stronger you grow, the more will come. Ask. Much has happened in the galaxy in your absence, and since the defeat of the Mandalorians at Malachor V, it is a tale you already know well. Almost a decade ago, the Mandalorians began preying on the Republic, bringing the fires of war to many planets along the Outer Rim. Their predations continued, winning victory after victory, until the Republic finally begged the Jedi Council for aid. Indeed, the Jedi Council counseled caution and patience to assess the Mandalorian threat as the Outer Rim burned. As Revan and Malak fought the Mandalorians in battle after battle, 
they grew to despise weakness, just as the Mandalorians did. In the end, the Mandalorians had taught them through conflict, shaped the Jedi, and turned them into a weapon against the Republic. Revan and Malak, and all the Jedi that served them, turned against the Republic and the Jedi Order. Jedi fought Jedi. Revan was ambushed by the Jedi and captured. Malak continued to wage war in his master's place, inflicting terrible wounds on the Republic. Wounds that bleed still. As all Sith do without a strong enemy, the Sith turned on each other. Revan escaped the Jedi and returned to finish Malak and that was the end of the Jedi Civil War. No one knows, certainly not I. Korriban lies in ruins, Revan is gone, and the blade of war he promised to stab into the heart of the galaxy has withdrawn. Where Revan wanders now, I do not know. It would seem that way from a certain point of view, perhaps. The Jedi Civil War left wounds that have yet to heal, we shall see if the Republic has the strength to survive. Perhaps it is sometimes difficult to find the truth in the Jedi Civil War. Was it the Republic that defeated Malak, or was it Revan? If it was Revan, then the Republic was never truly tested. A culture's teachings and most importantly the nature of its people achieve definition in conflict. They find themselves or find themselves lacking. Too long did the Republic remain unchallenged. It is a stagnant beast that labors for breath and has for centuries. The Jedi Order was the heart that sustained its sickness. Now the Jedi are lost. We shall see how long the Republic can survive. We shall see. The Jedi Civil War cost the Republic much. The resources of the Sith seemed limitless. The Republic's was not. Fleets of warships, soldiers, and people were lost. Entire planets were decimated. Their inhabitants dead, or refugees. It is a great burden for any civilization to bear. And this new threat, it is a quiet thing. Unlike the Jedi Civil War, it drives at something deeper than the strength of the Republic. It is aimed at you. The Republic was never what was important, ever. It was but a shell that surrounds the Jedi, just as the teachings of the Jedi are a shell surrounding the heart of man. You see, the war, the true war, has never been one waged by droids or warships or soldiers. They are but crude matter, obstacles against which we test ourselves. The true war is waged in the hearts of all living things against our own natures, light or dark. That is what shapes and binds this galaxy, not these creations of man. You are the battleground, and if you fall, the death of the Republic will be such a quiet thing, a whisper, that shall herald the darkness to come. Ask and... Indeed. And was it the same as before? If my suspicions are correct, perhaps the damage the Jedi Council did was not as permanent as they thought. It is not an easy thing to cut one off from the Force. What did you believe? That you suddenly lost your connection with the Force without reason? Indeed it is. It is much like losing one's ability to listen or being put into a deep sleep, unable to awaken to the galaxy around you. Such a thing has been done before, when Jedi have pronounced sentence on their own and exiled them as they did you. If not the Jedi, then what did you think was the cause of such a loss? War leaves many scars, but rarely does it blind one to the Force. If anything, conflict and challenge may make the connection stronger, more intense. No matter what horrors you experienced in the war, no matter who you served, it is unlikely that the Force would be lost to you unless another factor was involved. 
It is possible that such a thing can be undone. Still, even so, the chances of the Jedi undoing such a thing for a traitor is a slim thing at best, assuming they yet live. Our link may have had other consequences. Perhaps you can hear the Force again, distantly, through me. If so, then there is hope. I may be able to teach you, train you to feel the Force again, and if you will not allow me to help you, then other Jedi must train you, or undo the damage they have done. Do not honor me, fallen Jedi. Honor it by listening and learning. Do that, and perhaps we shall survive this thing, you and I. I offer to train you to become strong again, to know the ways of the Force, and to hear the Force sing within you as it once did. Then our training shall begin. Whenever I travel with you, I shall impart what I can to you through my words and presence. Ask. I would see to that fool in the cockpit and remind him of our destination. I would not want him attempting to veer from Telos. He is a fool and an imbecile. His potential lies downwards, not up. Watch that one. His thoughts are slippery. I do not trust him, and nor should you. Such a man serves himself first and his allies next. If I were you... Watch that one. His thoughts are... How's our passenger? She's still aging? Yeah, to you, maybe. I don't usually hear much beyond fool and imbecile. She's lucky she's a Jedi, or someone would have killed her years ago. I mean, how old do you think she is? She may have been good-looking once, but it takes some hard living to make creases like that. Yeah, her face looks like it was plowed by crazed Ord Mantell farmers. Don't tell me you were too distracted by her personality to notice. Oh, no, no, no. Look, look, I respect your privacy. I mean, when have I ever asked you any questions? I mean, besides that one. Well, the astrogation system is voice printed and locked down, but that T3 unit is doubling as the astrogation system. You can try to plot a course, but without that T3 unit to perform the calculations, you'd probably plow us into a star. As long as he doesn't steal the ship, we should be all right. I have no idea. Previous owner, maybe? Love to get it overhauled, but that's a major job. Besides, the droid will be good enough for now. Takes all kinds. Maybe someone didn't want anybody taking the ship out of the system, or knowing where the ship had been. Smugglers do it all the time in case the Republic decides to board them. Or so I hear. <laughs> yeah, well you got me there. Look, droids, I don't trust them. That one we fought? Some of them are built like that. Others just, well, break. In the head. Sometimes conflicting orders cause it. Give a droid too much data or tell it to do something it can't do, it'll crack their behavior module in half. Others just don't get memory wipes and they start going crazy. Speaking of which, I think that little trash compactor's long overdue. <laughs> Trust. So? Don't give me that. There were plenty of times back on Paragus where a lightsaber would have been helpful. Oh, yeah? I thought a Jedi was supposed to be married to their lightsaber. Guess I heard wrong. Were you a single hilt or one of those double-bladed Jedi? Huh. I hear the twin blades are harder to master, 
but they can make enemies stampede over each other running for cover. A lot of Jedi in the Mandalorian Wars use double-bladed sabers. A more aggressive blade gives you more slaughter per swing. Hey, you didn't go red, did you? Great. Maybe you and that Sith Lord can have a party after we're dead. Must have been something. Sure be nice to have it now. Might make those Sith think twice before coming after us. All right, forget I said anything. Like I said before, you can check our course on the galaxy map if you want. It's on the wall behind you. If I were you, I would see to that fool in the co- He is a fool and an imbecile. His potential lies downwards, not up. Watch that one. If I were you... Ask... This is Citadel Station Bay Control, Dock Module 126. Please remain where you are. Lieutenant Dolgren will arrive shortly to meet you. That is all. I don't like the sound of that. If they think we caused the explosion... Uh-oh. Here comes the welcoming party. They may not know what happened, so don't blow it. I'm Lieutenant Gren, Telos Security Force. I'm under orders to take you into custody in regards to the destruction of the Paragas Mining Facility. That as it may be, the circumstances of your arrival are suspect at best. Due to the nature of the investigation, I have no specific timetable to offer you. In the meantime, your ship and any droids will have to be given over for safekeeping. Yes, that includes you. You are a droid, so you will be detained. In addition, we will have to take your personal arms and armor until the completion of our inquiry. You are the only witnesses of the mining facility's destruction. Thus, it is necessary for us to keep you under surveillance until we have a better idea of what happened. If you are cleared of any involvement, your personal effects will be returned to you. You will be held briefly in the TSF station until living quarters can be arranged, at which point you will be placed under house arrest. Do you understand? Good. 
My men will relieve you of any arms and armor. Please follow me. Tell me I'm not going to jail again. You will be held here briefly. Living quarters are being arranged for you and your companions as we speak. Someone will return shortly to escort you to an apartment in Residential Module 082. I have many matters to tend to. Your questions will have to wait. Well, we might be here for a while. Might as well get comfortable. Someone is coming. So this is the last of the Jedi. I must admit I'm a little disappointed. Doubtful, though at least it appears you have some spirit. The Exchange has a bounty on Jedi, you know. You're worth quite a bit of money. The Exchange, huh? <laughs> I'm pretty sure some two-bit pistol jockey like yourself isn't one of them. Hey, I'm more than skilled enough to work for the Exchange. You bounty hunters couldn't even win a fair fight. You're the cheapest, most worthless mercenary scum in the galaxy. I'd hire a Mandalorian over your filth in a second. No Mandalorian could match my skills. No Mandalorian could have been clever enough to infiltrate this station, taking the identity of one of the guards, then... Then what? Overloaded our force cage fields and made it look like an accident? You probably don't even have the guts to fight me. <laughs> Pathetic. Don't think overloading your cages had not occurred to me. You're wanted alive, but I doubt anyone will care as long as I bring them your corpse. The security cameras have mysteriously shorted out. There will be no witnesses to your escape attempt, during which I'll have been forced to kill you. By the time the TSF realize I'm not one of them, I will be far from this place. Come, Jedi. It is time to die. Hey, leave her alone. You want to fight? Then try me, if you've got the guts. You have goaded me once, and you shall not do so twice. But I shall dispose of all of you eventually. And an old woman, a fool, and a broken Jedi are no match to my skills. The security cameras are... What? What's going on here? Man down! Quick! Call a medic! All right, Jedi. I want you to back up slowly. Hands in front of you. Into the force cage. Cooperate, and we won't have to gun you down. Come on, Lieutenant. They've already killed... Uh, uh, who is that? Is that Batu Rem? Rem's no assassin. Batu Rem is on leave. He shouldn't even be on the station. This man isn't him. That's something we're gonna have to look into. I can tell you that it can't have been easy. We've arranged for an apartment in Residential Module 082. You'll stay there under house arrest until our investigation of the Paragras matter is complete. You'll be under TSF protection. I'll personally clear any visitors to your quarters, and we'll investigate this incident to the best of our ability. Officer, let Lieutenant Yima a report of this incident. She'll look into this. The rest of you come with me. We'll escort you to the apartment in 082 immediately. These will serve as your quarters for the duration of your house arrest. Two officers will be stationed outside at all times. Again, I'll clear any visitors. There won't be another incident. But just to be on the safe side, why don't you leave us a blaster or two? I can't say. We have a ship examining what's left of the Paragus facility now, so your stay might be brief. We'll keep you informed. Now, this is a step up from a force cage, at least. If there are any problems, 
We'll use the wall terminal to contact you. Let's go. This isn't good. We've got to get off this station. What do you think the TSF is going to find at Paragus? That could bring the Sith... You know what? Forget it. As long as we're trapped here, it doesn't matter. We cannot stay in any one place too long. But our path has brought us here for a reason. I must meditate on this. In the meantime, we should rest. Yeah, you go ahead and meditate. As for me, I could use some sleep. Excuse me, you have... Lieutenant Grenz cleared him if you'd like to speak with him. Very well. I'll let him in now. Perhaps Chodahabad should turn his eyes to his own people, if they truly suffer so. He endured it out, and he behind all of the earth. He don't care for what he don't care for. Now perhaps we will be able to rest uninterrupted. Accepting my call. As my assistant no doubt informed you, I am John Aloso. I understand that you were approached by Nathorian earlier. Doubtless he tried to obtain your help, attempting to purchase it with imposed guilt and veiled threats. I believe you're a person of influence, someone I'd like on my side, rather than aiding the Athorians whose quasi-mysticism and bumbling foolishness is standing in the way of progress and profit. I'm not asking for your help, though. I'm offering you a job. Work for Zerka and be handsomely rewarded. You'd be helping yourself. If you're interested, please visit our offices here in Residential 082. B44 will know what to do when you arrive. <laughs> Their plans for the restoration of Telos are aimless and meandering. Restore the sacred, natural beauty of Telos, they say. Just what does that mean? How does that apply to natural resource development and consumption? The proper planning of urban sectors, resorts and tourism? It doesn't. The Athorians are spending billions of Republic credits on a plan with no defined profit. If it continues, they'll drive the Republic into irreparable debt and have nothing to show for it but a few meadows and a weather generator the size of a small continent. I'd rather discuss that in person. I'll be more than happy to answer any and all questions when you visit our offices. Excellent. Good luck with that messy investigation, and I hope to see you shortly. We should get back to bed. Whenever they decide to release us, we should get going immediately.
Explain something to me. I do not have the years required, nor the desire to indulge you. If she served in the war, well, Jedi are supposed to be tough, capable. Yes, and what are they without the Force? Take the greatest Jedi Knight, strip away the Force, and what remains? They rely on it, depend on it more than they know. Watch as one tries to hold a blaster, as they try to hold a lightsaber, and you will see nothing more than a woman, or a man, a child. But to lose so much, I guess I didn't realize how much they relied on it. Do not be surprised. In many ways, even you are more capable than a Jedi. You could survive where they could not simply because you do not hear the Force as they do. It is irony of a sort, and it is why I tolerate your presence now. But such a loss of ability for a Jedi, it seems so extreme. She has been gone from war some time. It is conflict that strengthens us, and isolation that weakens us, erodes us. Add to that that she turned away from war, did all that she could to forget it, and the last piece clicks into place. But we have spoken enough of this, and we do her a disservice by not speaking of this while she is present. I've come to inform you that the Talosian government has completed its inspection of what's left of the Paragas facility. It appears that the Harbinger had indeed been present, though it was gone when our ships arrived and was responsible for the station's destruction. Logs recovered from the facility's wreckage indicated that the miners perished as a result of sabotage, which began while you and your companions were either incapacitated or incarcerated. As such, you are to be released from house arrest. However, the Republic is sending its own ship. They have insisted that you remain on station for the duration of their search. To further investigate the station's destruction and search for their missing ship, the Harbinger. The sojourn is already en route, likely not more than a few standard days. Feel free to use these quarters during your stay. The vessel's IND is complete. Please visit the TSF station in Entertainment Module 081 to complete the necessary paperwork at the front desk. The Evan Hawk should be transferred from the impound docks by the time you're free to leave. After filling out the paperwork, it'll be transferred with your ship along with your confiscated weapons and armor. Well, now what? We can't just stick around. We need to find a way off the station, whether it's the Evan Hawk or some other ship. We could hit Nar Shada, maybe. If you've got people coming after you, it's where you go to get lost in the crowd.